Today, we are celebrating the Epiphany, which is the 12th day of Christmas, normally celebrated on January the 6th. Epiphany is a time in which we celebrate the revelation of Christ to the Gentiles. Of our readings today, I want to focus on Isaiah and Matthew, both of which are twinned on Epiphany. In Isaiah, we have this beautiful line, arise, shine, for your light has come. Isaiah was speaking to a people who were in exile. They had been taken away forcibly from their land to a foreign place, to Babylon, where they had lived for more than a generation. There was no temple, it had been destroyed. There were no priests, there were no sacrifices. There was little to hope for. It indeed was a very dark time. But a new king had come. Cyrus of Persia had conquered the Babylonians, and he had promised return to the Jews. And so hope was born anew. And Isaiah speaks to them. He speaks to these people who knew darkness, they knew alienation, they knew isolation. And so imagine how their hearts leapt with joy when they heard his words, arise, shine, your light has come. And then he goes on to paint a vivid picture of God's plan, one that it's clear with deep joy of a return to a former life, to a nation where in a time when the nations that dominated them will come to them, come to their holy city of Jerusalem, come to worship their God in the temple. And then there's Matthew. Matthew, we read about a Palestine, which itself was an occupied land. In fact, much of it was foreign owned and the very people whose land it was had to rent farmland. So there was a great amount of tension. You could even say that they were exiled in their own country. This is not the picture that was in Isaiah's mind when he spoke those words almost 500 years before the time of Jesus. There was a king, indeed, of the Jews named Herod, who was a despot and an exceedingly cruel man, and he really wasn't accepted, barely considered Jewish. And into this tense time, enter the wise men or the magi. They would have been Arabs coming from the east. And they certainly would not have been welcomed. Who needs more foreigners into this land? And indeed, with the news that they brought, that they were there because they had saw a star announcing the coming of a new king of the Jews, this was not good news. In fact, it was threatening news. It was a threat to Herod and his kingship. It was the threat of Rome possibly coming down to crush Herod and his kingdom with any messianic movements that may spring up. And so Matthew tells us that Herod and all of Jerusalem were filled with fear. But isn't that the way it is when we are in difficult situations, when things aren't going the way we want, when we're unhappy and feeling like it's dark, and we get news from an unfamiliar source? We treat it with skepticism at the best, and likely with fear, like the people did back then. I'm often thought it reminds me of Moses, You remember the story in Exodus? He returns to Egypt after 40 years away, announcing that God has sent him back to free the Hebrew people. They didn't greet him with excitement and, and hallelujahs. Instead, they distrusted him and were greatly fearful that things would get worse for them. So news that we may think is good may not be all that good to the people who heard it. And so the religious leaders and Herod 
sent the wise men off to Bethlehem. Herod saying, oh, by the way, come back and tell me so that I too may worship. And so off these wise men went to this peasant town, finding a house where they realized this was indeed the place. And it was at that moment that everything changed. It was a moment of revelation. Revelation is a wonderful word. It's something like when we realize an important truth. Then, that, that, that with that truth that has been revealed to us, we were able to reinterpret our past, and we were able to rethink our way forward in the light of our new truth. And what was the truth of Epiphany? Well, it was that Christ has been revealed to all persons in all times. The past, with all its darkness, fear, and confusion, suddenly makes sense to us. And our future, we are called into a new direction. Epiphany points us to God's universal love, his love for all persons, not just a particular people, not just the right people, but all persons, all genders, all races, all the poor, the rich, the powerful, the powerless, all sexualities or ethnicities. God incarnate love and flesh is here, present with us, shining brightly to overcome the darkness. Isaiah's words are now heard not only as hope and joy to that particular people in Babylon in exile, but to all of us through all the ages. And we join at Epiphany with the wise men to pay our homage and worship because we now know that God is with us. So in this time of Epiphany, we're invited to reflect upon all and how in the ordinary and extraordinary ways the light of Christ has appeared to us and to our loved ones. Back several years ago now, my dad was diagnosed with cancer, one of the bad cancers. And it was apparent, or he believed, that it had metastasized to his brain. And he had had a test that day to determine if that was true. And he knew that if it was true, that the end was near. He had a habit that his son has not picked up of writing out prayers. He left all of his his children a wonderful legacy of what he was thinking through those prayers. And this time he wrote a prayer for healing. In it, he poured out his heart, asking that God would heal him. But he also said this, which is where... I find the most comfort. He said, but it's okay if I'm not, because I know who you are, and I know that in all of this, it will be okay. You see, he realized that the light of Christ was sufficient, no matter what would come in the future, and that he was okay because he existed in that love, and would always exist in that love. And he knew to his family that my sisters and my mother would be okay, and that even in death, there was no darkness at all. So Epiphany is a time for us to reflect on that and to remember and share those stories. But it's also a time for us to consider how we may be the light by which others see God. For that is our calling. And I think it's particularly true in this time of COVID restrictions as we await for a better time to come, a little bit like those exiles in, in Babylon. And how might we do that? Well, it is to practice kindness and patience, 
and give of ourselves and share with the people that we meet our encounters with God. So arise and shine, for your light has come. Go and share the light of Christ with all. Amen.